Okay, let's talk about medians, altitudes, and perpendicular bisectors of triangles. So the first thing I want to discuss is a median, and this works for any triangle. So I'll just draw a random triangle here, and the median is a segment from a vertex to the midpoint of the opposite side. So let's say that this is the midpoint of this side right here. Then the median would go from this opposite vertex across to that midpoint. And every triangle has three medians. So if this is the midpoint of this side, then here's the median from that vertex. And then finally, if I draw the midpoint over here, then this is the median from the opposite vertex to that midpoint. And you notice that they all three intersect in one point, which means that they are concurrent. All right. That means they all intersect at the same point. Okay, an altitude can be tricky. It is the perpendicular segment, perpendicular from a vertex to the line that contains the opposite side. Okay, so I'm going to draw a triangle here. And, well, not real straight are my sides, are they? There we go. A little better. All right, so there's my triangle. Okay, now the altitude is going to be the perpendicular segment from a vertex. So if I want to draw the altitude from this vertex right here, I'm going to go straight down so that it makes a 90 degree angle with that opposite side. Okay, and once again, every triangle has three altitudes. So if I want to do from this vertex, I'm going to go straight across so that they're perpendicular that way. And guess what? Altitudes are also concurrent. Now, do altitudes hit the midpoints? No. They don't have to. Usually they won't. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to do a little demonstration to show you that the altitudes can actually go outside of a triangle. Okay, so here's a triangle I'm going to click to show the altitudes, and you can see that they are perpendicular from a vertex to the opposite side. But watch what happens when I make this triangle obtuse. Look at that. This altitude goes the opposite side like normal, but this altitude goes from the vertex to the line containing this opposite side. In other words, here's the opposite side of this vertex, but I've got to extend this line out past the, this vertex right here, and then I draw perpendicular to that line. And look, this line right here is the out, this little segment is the vertex is the altitude, sorry, the altitude from vertex A to the line containing BC, because A is opposite BC. So I extend the line past segment BC, and then I draw the perpendicular there. So altitudes can actually go outside of a triangle. Okay, so there's an acute triangle. They're all inside the triangle. There's an obtuse triangle. They're outside the triangle. What happens if the triangle is a right triangle? Guess what? the two legs, the two perpendicular legs, are altitudes themselves. Okay, a perpendicular bisector of a segment is a line that is perpendicular to the segment at its midpoint. So, let's start with a segment. Whoop. Okay, I'll call this segment A, B, and I will make point C the midpoint. And the perpendicular bisector is the line that goes through that midpoint and forms a right angle with the segment. That is called a perpendicular bisector because it's perpendicular and it also bisects the segment. All right, so here's a theorem. If a point is on the perpendicular bisector of a segment, then that point is equidistant from the end point of the segment. So here's my midpoint. I'm going to draw my perpendicular bisector right there. So it's a perpendicular bisector. And we're saying that if I've got a point, any point in that perpendicular bisector, it is equidistant from the end points of the segment. In other words, that distance is equal to that distance. Okay, so how does that work? Well, I've got this piece right here 
congruent to that piece by definition of midpoint. I've got a right angle right here by definition of perpendicular line, right? Perpendicular lines create right angles. And this side is congruent to itself by reflexive. And so I have a side angle side situation. So that this triangle over here is congruent to this triangle over here by SAS. And that means that this Seg this segment here is congruent to that segment by CPCTC. And that's what we're trying to prove. Okay, this is simply the converse of what we just talked about. So if I've got a segment and I've got a point that is equidistant from the end points, then guess what? That point must lie on the perpendicular bisector of that segment. It's just the converse of what we just learned. Okay, what if I've got a line and I've got a point not on that line, then what is the distance from that point to the line? Is it that distance? Is it that distance? Well, it turns out that when we talk about the distance from a point to a line, we always refer to the perpendicular distance. So this is the distance that we want. The distance that is from the point to the line that creates a right angle. Okay, got a couple more theorems here and they're just converses of each other. So let's say I've got an angle and let's draw the bisector of that angle. Okay, so this angle is congruent to that. Then any point on this bisector is equidistant from the sides of the angle. What does that mean? It means if I draw this distance here, remember from a point to a line it's got to make a perpendicular angle there, then this distance is equal to that distance. Any point on the angle bisector is equidistant from the sides of the angle. And this is simply the converse of that. If I've got an angle and I have a point that I know is equidistant from the sides. So in other words, this distance equals that distance. Well, guess what? That means this point has to be on the angle bisector of the angle. All right, here's some examples. Draw an equilateral triangle DEF. Okay, I'll try and make it equilateral best I can. That means all sides are equal. D, E, F. Draw the bisector of angle D. Okay, I'm going to go right down the middle of this angle. The altitude from D, okay, guess what? It's the same thing. And the median from D, it's also the same thing. So with equilateral triangles, angle bisectors, altitudes, and medians are all the same thing. But that's only true for um, equilateral triangles. Okay, if Z lies on the bisector of angle CAB, so let's draw that right here. Okay, so there it is right there. And there's point Z. Then Z is equidistant from, it's equidistant from the sides of the angles, remember? So it's equidistant from segment AC and segment AB. Okay, what's next? If P is equidistant from segments CA and CB, okay, so let's draw P right here. And that distance there is the same as that distance there. Then guess what? It is on the angle bisector of angle ACB. So I'm going to write that. So then P lies on the angle bisector of angle ACB. And our last example, point P lies between points R and S. Okay, I'm going to put point R right there. I'm going to put point S out there. I'm going to put point P right there. Just anywhere between R and S is point P. 
All right, line M is the perpendicular bisector of segment RP. Okay, here's line M, perpendicular bisector. And line K is the perpendicular bisector of PS. Okay, so I'm going to put line K like this. Oh, I forgot to label. This is M. This is K. What is the relationship between M and K? Well, since they are both perpendicular to segment RS, that means that M is parallel to K because two lines perpendicular to a third transversal, to a third line is a transversal, are parallel.